can't even read anymore. So how many hours did this video take? Way too many, way, 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 way too many. So what did I do? I had the amazing idea one day that I wanted to see how often you get each PLL, how often you get skips, and for me, how often I use ZBLLs. Since I really wanted an answer to this question, I ended up doing 5,000 solves. You heard that correctly, 5,000 solves over the course of a long time and recording the PLL if I got a skip or if I got a ZBLL and the time on the solve. The intention of this is to look at the stats over all 5,000 solves and see which PLLs occur more often, which PLLs have the lowest average amongst getting those PLLs, the lowest standard deviation, and the best and worst single times. Firstly, after I gathered the data, I ranked which PLLs I thought would come up more and which ones I thought would have the best averages before I ran statistics on the solves using a tier thingamabobber that I found online. So we'll go over that first and then we'll go over the data to see what we're actually able to learn, any interesting insights, and speculate as to why some of the results may have been the way they were, why results for other people may look different, and compare my guesses with what actually happened in terms of the 5,000 solves. And maybe there will be a few interesting takeaways from this video, like if you should learn ZBLL or not, and which PLLs suck, because there is one of mine that I don't like. And if you appreciate the massive amount of time that goes into prepping, filming, editing, and all the other work it takes to run my YouTube channel, a like click on the like button goes a long way, and if you like content like this, make sure to subscribe down below. So let's get on to the ranking process and the results. So as of right now, I have the data from the 5,000 solves but I haven't done anything to them. So before I actually run analytics on them, I'm going to try and predict or sort of make educated guesses as to which PLLs come up more often and which PLLs I had better solve times on. So here you'll see this tier maker thingamabobber that I found where I'm not really sure what the letter tiers are, but I'm just gonna pretend that the top is the ones that come up mo most often and the ones on the bottom come up the least often. And I just have pictures of all 21 PLLs and I'll just go through one by one. And right now I'm going to rank how often I think they come up. So which ones come up more frequently, which obviously is the same thing. So starting over here with these A perms, uh, I feel like A perms come up maybe maybe like second or third tier. They come up pretty often. I don't know why. E perms, I feel like they don't come up often because every time they do, I'm like, no, it's an E perm. So I'll probably put that down here. F perms, I also probably feel maybe between E and A perms. Okay. G perms, I think they come up probably relative in the middle. Um, So on the B tier and I, I'll just put them all together because I don't know. I'm just going to assume they all kind of appear with the same frequency. And then for H perms and Z perms, which is over here, here at the end? What if I just move these two over? I feel like I get these very little. More often than not, if the corners are solved, I'll get a U perm. So I'll just put these down here, even though these are nice cases. J perms. I feel like I get J perms a lot. Mm, I'm gonna put them up here. I feel like I get J perms a lot. N perms probably don't come up too much because when they do, they aren't great. So I'll put them. Yeah, I think they're on the level as E perms, like meh level. R perms probably belong with like the F perms and G perms, I think in terms of frequency. And I'll just assume that these two are similar in frequency. I think it would be actually really interesting if two versions of the same algorithm like JA and JB had significantly different number of occurrences or average times. So we'll see. T perm, I also feel like I get that pretty often and executed pretty quickly. So we'll put it here. Um, For U perms, I feel like I get U perms a lot. I think I think U perms and J perms are the most often ones. And then V perm and Y perm. Hmm. I think V perms don't come up as often. And Y perms probably, I think Y perms are on par with T perms. So this is going to be my ranking in terms of how often I think PLLs come up. So I'll try and save this. So now I'm going to try and rank what I think the PLLs will be in terms of time. So let's just say, uh, I don't know, S is fastest and green is slowest. So which algs lead to the best solves? And obviously a solve isn't based solely on the PLL and its execution, but just for the purposes of this little experiment, let's see what I think versus what it actually is. So I'm gonna try and pick the algs first that I think are really quick to execute, or at least that I execute really quickly. So I think for this category, it would be definitely U perms. Where are they? J perm, J A perm at least is very, very quick to execute. Um, what else is really fast? I think the A perms are pretty quick. I'll put them on this tier. H perm, where's the other, where's H? Nope, nope. I feel like I'm looking at these colors for so long, I can't even tell what PLL is what anymore. Okay, okay, Z perm and H perm, I'm gonna put them together because I feel like I execute them relatively similarly in speed. And I think I'll put them here. And then, okay, I already know what I'm putting at the bottom. So at the bottom, we're gonna put this N perm and B perm. And just above that, I'm going to put the NA perm because you can spam TPS for that one since it is a mod of the regular J perm. <laughs> Let us see. I'm going to put all the G perms together. I think it's a standard. I'll put them in the middle. Where's the other one? Oh, okay. Do 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 E perm. E perm, I think it takes me a long time to recognize, but I execute quickly. So I'm going to put it down here with the NA perm. Y perm also is pretty spammy, but there are a lot of moves. So I'll put it with Z perm. T perm is really fast to execute. Definitely. I don't know what S is, but 
S, yeah, we'll put it there. Uh, hmm. JB, I think is slower to execute than JA, but it's still really fast. It's a really nice algorithm. Sometimes I just use the left DJ perm, which is probably roughly the same speed. R perms. These are some of the slower algs I would imagine. Let's put it like this. F perm. I feel like F perms can sometimes really lock and then just sort of messes up your whole solve. So I'll put it, I'll put it down here. And then V perms with the, with the new V perm is actually pretty fast. So I'll put the V perm on par with the G perms. So this is going to be my ranking in terms of how fast I think certain PLLs will be. And of course, this is just looking at the overall solve time. So even if the F2L is really, really bad or really, really good, it doesn't matter. We're just going to be looking at the overall solve time. So there are going to be factors that we're not considering, but this is going to be my guess as to how quickly I can execute PLLs. So ranked in order of speed of execution. So now what you should be seeing on screen is how I did this. Um, I basically, I just had this window open every time I was solving. And after every solve, I typed down the PL I got and the time I got. So uh, you'll see there are quite a number of solves. Let's speed this up a bit. Doo, doo, doo. Oh yeah, and you'll see some of these notations. I notated when I got ZBLLs and when I got skips. Skip, 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 skip. I'm gonna just drag this down. It's taking too long. But yeah, you will see I have 5,000 solves of data here, and the last one was a ZBLL with the 6.8. So I haven't run any stats on this again, and I made my predictions before I ran any stats. So I think I'll, I'll make some, I'm going to try and gather some of this data and see, look, take a look at some of the statistics and see how that compares against what I thought it was going to be. Small note that apparently 20 of the solves were misentered with PLL, so I have a total of 4,980 to work from. And also apparently, what is this, best solve time? Apparently I entered a 1.027 second solve, which is definitely incorrect. So I'll be figuring out what's happening with that so that we don't have some weird data points. So yeah, there may be a chance that some of these were misentered, but hopefully they're mostly accurate for the most part. So what I've done so far is I've uh, I've used Google Sheets to automatically run stats on the information for me, but I haven't really taken a close look at that. So this is kind of me going over the results, going over what I think of the results, what, what I think might explain some of the results. And then lastly, if I remember, I'll compare it to what I thought was the results. So on screen here, you'll see the raw data that I inputted where the solves are numbered. I write down the PLL I got. You'll see some of these I'll write down if I got a ZBLL. And let's see if there's a skip somewhere on here. Like here, uh, I got a skip. That was a pretty good solve, I guess, 559. Five, and I'll just notate that for all 5,000 solves. And if I take you all the way down, you'll see there are 5,000 solves on this page. So firstly, this is the raw data, and then I have some charts that should help visualize information. One thing to note, when I counted the number of solves that had each PLL, I ended up with 4,980, so I must have misentered the PLL and it just didn't register. So I'm losing about 20 solves here, which also brings up the point that some of this data may be inaccurate. Earlier, I found that I had entered a one second solve. I think it was supposed to be a 10 second solve, so I just moved the decimal over. So there may be inaccuracies in how the data was entered because I was doing it kind of quickly between solves. So first you'll see I put the PLLs alphabetically here on the side and then I put ZBLLs and skips at the bottom. The data that I'm running the statistics on are about 5,000 solves, 20 of them obviously have disappeared. And then you'll be able to see the average solve time of each each PLL. So this is, for example, if I had 100 AA perms, the average between those 100 solves was 8.04 seconds. And this was done through Google Sheets, didn't do that by hand. Another statistic I wanted to look at was standard deviation because perhaps some PLLs, they can be fast to execute, but if they also take a long time and they have a really high standard deviation, it might be worth looking into either changing to a more stable ALK or working on that ALK to make it more consistent. And of course, just for sort of interesting purposes only, I looked at the best solve time and the worst solve time of each PLL. And obviously, as you can expect, the best solve time was on a skip, but some of these worst times, my worst was actually on a ZBLL, and that was probably because I still am learning a lot of ZBLL, so I maybe got one that I just learned and it took me a couple seconds to recognize it and to execute the solve. So yeah, this is the aggregate data over all PLLs, and then I rank them by the number of occurrences, the average standard deviation, and then best and worst solve. So let's go over these charts a little bit quickly. Number of occurrences, honestly, the most surprising thing is NA and MB come up very, very little. Like if you if you look at this, they come up 10 times less often than the UA perm. I also found it quite interesting that the UA perm came up 50 more times than the UB perm because theoretically these should come up the same. Obviously, I don't know the math behind how often PLLs come up and it may be different depending on the algs you use for OLL and things like that, but I found that quite interesting. So UA perm came up roughly about 10% of the time. Not 10%, less than 10%, but uh, a very large portion of the time, which I found quite, quite interesting. And the fact that H, NB, and NA came up each less than 100 times which is really, really interesting. So each of these are, they come up like 10 times less often than the UA perm. And obviously I expected skip to be down here, but I did not realize that I would get more skips than H perms or N perms. 
And then another thing to note, I think at this point I know 120 ZBLLs. I didn't actually expect ZBL to be so high up here. So I think that's actually really, that's, it's a very interesting point that ZBL is so high on this list because it does have a relatively low average time. And I think learning so many algs pays off because it comes up often and you're able to utilize these algs and you're able to skip PLL. Obviously not skip because you're doing the alg that you know will solve the cube, but that was also quite interesting. Everything else is kind of, I suppose, as expected. I didn't realize GC was going to be up here so much. I also did not expect all the G perms to be so, so, so spread out. For example, GC is up here in three, in position three, GB is down here, GA is down here, and GD is down here. I really don't have any explanation as to why GD came up 80 times less than GC and why they're so spread out. That's also pretty interesting to me, but everything else is kind of scattered and I suppose as I expected. So that's in terms of how often I get each PLL. In terms of average, this is actually pretty interesting because obviously skip is so, so, so much lower than the other ones because you're just skipping a step. I also did expect, I think I expected my top five, my top seven maybe even to be these algorithms, just maybe not in this order. So obviously skip is the fastest average by 0.7 seconds because you're skipping an entire alg, which I suppose is like around 0.7, whatever to one second. And then these algorithms at the top here, I did expect them to be up here because you can execute them really quickly. You can spam TPS on them. And I think I execute them pretty well. So this includes like the J perms, uh, the U perms, the H perm and the T perm. And then you'll note down here is the NB perm. I just learned a new alg for it. So my execution of it isn't great. Hence why it is kind of down here. Everything else is pretty, I suppose, as expected. I don't think there are any super interesting things here. Additionally, interesting enough, this list is kind of flipped in terms of the average. If you look at the average to standard deviation, skip is number one on average, but it's down here for the standard deviation. And ZBLL is also up here for average, but has a really high standard deviation. Whereas NBPerm has a really high average solve time, but it has the lowest standard deviation, which is interesting. So I think a lot of these worse PLLs, I execute them much more consistently than the fast ones. Cause the fast ones, if you get a little bit of a lockup, it can cost like a second, half a second. So I think that's why skips and ZBLLs end up at the bottom here. And I think ZBL is dead last because of the variation in recognition times and the fact that a lot of the algs are still new to me. So that was pretty interesting. Otherwise, nothing super interesting. Now, in terms of best and worst solve, I don't think these statistics are super helpful because a solve is not dictated by solely by the PLL, which is why it's more interesting to look at the average and standard deviation, not the best single solve. Because if I got an F2L skip and an NB perm, that would be like a two, one two second solve. But regardless, so this list looks pretty similar, I think, to the average list, which makes sense. I got a couple fours on with a skip and the JA perm, whereas like the N perms, I was unable to get under 6.5. So this list, I believe, is pretty similar to the average list, so nothing super special here. And then worst solve, this is really interesting for me because because I kind of expected ZBL to be on here because again, sometimes if I just learned an algorithm, it will take me a while to recognize it. And sometimes I'll just stop the solving and then go look up the alg because I forgot it. And I don't count those. I, yeah, I don't count DNFs or plus twos when I practice at home. But yeah, so ZBL is definitely number one here because of the variance in recognition. And I think skip is last because if you skip a step, the worst that's gonna happen is that you have a really bad F2L. So I suppose that's what happened in this case. And I don't think there's anything super interesting about this one. So these numbers might be hard to contextualize. So I made little graphs of them and hopefully they are kind of helpful. So if you look at number of occurrences, everything is kind of sort of scattered except for UA and UB, which are significantly higher. And I think the reason for this is that I do use COLL. So anytime I get uh, an OLL that has all the edges solved, I'm going to get some kind of U perm, Z perm, H perm. And obviously H and Z are down here somewhere. Where is Z? Z's, Z's here. I've been looking at letters and colors and numbers all day. I, I can't even read anymore. But yeah, so the, the biggest discrepancy, I suppose, is that UA and UB are so high, and that's because I use COLL. Everything else is kind of scattered, and then at the very bottom, definitely fewer NA and NB perms. There's sort of a drop-off there, and then E skips and H perms for some reason also have like a little drop-off, whereas everything else is kind of kind of like evenly falling off. In terms of average solve time, the two outliers here are skips and the NB perm. Obviously, skip is going to give you much, much better average because you're skipping an entire step, and NB I just don't like. I need to definitely practice that alg and definitely get it better in how it's executed, but everything else is pretty, pretty reasonably sort of jagged. In terms of standard deviation, again, nothing super big here, except for the fact that ZBLL has a much higher standard deviation than everything else, because again, as I said before, I think my recognition of certain ZBLLs is much, much slower. I think this will, this, this will change over time as I get more of them into my uh, knowledge and muscle memory, and I'm able to recognize and execute them faster. So that's really the only interesting thing here. Mm, yeah, everything else is kind of sort of uniform 
uniformly dipping off if you look at it that way. I don't know what, what way. I still can't figure out which way my videos are because I think the backgrounds flipped correctly, but I just don't know. Anyway, on, on the other ones, PLL, best time, worst time, these are kind of reflections of the average. So best time does kind of look like the average chart. In fact, the top two are the same. Yeah, the top two are same. So it's skip and J perm, which totally makes sense. And UA perm, I suppose. Yeah, again, the, these best solve and worst time solves, English, uh, don't say too much because if the F2L is really, really good, that can make a really bad PLL good and vice versa. So these are just sort of more interesting to look at. And in terms of worst time, everything again, sort of kind of falls off uniformly, except ZBL is up here uh, because again, recognition can vary greatly. And skip is down here because even in the worst case, if you have a terrible F2L, which apparently I had like a seven second F2L, you'll skip PLL. So yeah, these are the graphs and the raw data that I had from 5,000 solves, give or take about 20 because I probably messed it up somewhere. But that was actually pretty interesting. I think it's pretty eye-opening actually because it answered a couple questions for me. Firstly, I don't like the NB perm, but that means I need to practice it more and get it down into my muscle memory because I did just switch my ALK for it. Secondly, ZBLs are very volatile, but they really, really pay off in the long term because I've been learning ZBL for a while now and I've been trying to learn one every couple days or so. And then if I'm sort of really feeling in mood, I'll do one every day or a couple every day. So those are really volatile, but over time they become much better. And that's why they have a pretty low average time, but they also do have a high standard deviation. So I think over time, my goal is to get that standard deviation for ZBLs down. Everything else is sort of reinforced what I already thought, sort of that I get U perms a lot. J perms are super fast to execute. I don't like the MB perm and things like that. So that was pretty interesting, actually. It took a lot of time, but I think that was worth it just to sort of take an overview at the data. I think my overall predictions were correct in terms of which PLLs would be in which sort of general group, but even within that group, or there were a couple PLLs that I completely guessed wrong. I hope you enjoyed my breakdown, analysis, and ranking slash comparison of 5,000 solves that I did. This video really, really did take a lot of time to prep for, to gather the data for, and to edit. And well, I haven't actually edited yet, but I imagine it might take a while to edit. So to show your love and support, maybe hit the like button or subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Let me know what you guys want to see. I'm always looking for new ideas, and I'll see you guys around. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and subscribe for the latest content.